This is Neil Schneider from Meant to Be Seen at CES 2018. To my immediate right is Ryan Schlieper. He is Product Marketing Manager for Creative Labs. Right. Welcome to the program, Ryan. Hey, thank you for having me. I'm awesome to be here. It's awesome to be here. Now, uh, this is actually, a, in my opinion, a really big deal. Uh, and Ryan, you're going to tell us why it's such a big deal. Yeah. So we were asked about the uh, our sound cards. So Creative is primarily known for our Sound Blaster sa our brand. We've been making sound cards for the past 35 years. And we've typically had an iteration every couple years or so of the card. And our last iteration, prior to the one I'm going to show you here, is the Z Series. And the Z Series sound card was doing so well for us. We had three models in the lineup. Um, did so well for us that we just kind of let it run. We iterated the drivers. We made sure things were, made a lot of changes in our driver set, refined them, minimized them so that it would have a smaller imprint, all the things that users have asked for for a long time, and kept adding features to it. Um, and we were really looking at how can we add something new to the sound card that's not just going to be a rebranding of a technology or something that's been done before with a fancy new name or whatnot. And when we finally had those pieces of the puzzle in place, we came to market with the AE5, which is right here. This is the Pure Edition. It's the white version of it. And we're capitalizing on a few things. First off, immediately, cosmetically, it's an RGB controller integrated into the card. So we know RGB is popular with a big segment of PC gaming. Is lighting? Or? Lighting, yeah. And because of where we sit in the audio architecture, we're so low in the subsystem of audio that we're able to do really cool things integrated with systems that other people can't do because they're a little bit higher in the system order. So, so let, let's rewind a little yeah, bit. Yeah. Like for myself, my experience, I, I big fan of your yeah. your your products. Yeah. I mean, the first thing I did when I got a computer was forget the motherboard yeah. audio, yeah, yeah. get a Sound Blaster card yes. because there's no comparison. Yes, absolutely. And the last card I had was the XFI, yep. an earlier version yep. of the XFI. Yep. But the thing is, people got your your sound cards because they really were much better yes. than what you get on a motherboard. Hundred percent. Like you know, forgive my choice of language, but in those days, and it wasn't so long ago, <laughs> yes. it was it was poop. It really yes. was yes. compared to what you get absolutely. with a sound card. And, but and motherboards have been advancing. Yes. You know, they've been getting better components, better transistors. They've been adding to the as they try to differentiate with each other. They've been getting better and better because audio is something that gamers care about but is almost an afterthought. And so for us, knowing that we're competing against that, what can we bring to market that's different that they can't do? So we're, the, the viewers are going to almost have to take your word for yeah. it. Well, and that's the, that's the hardest part about audio, right? So we all know graphics cards. You get a graphics card and, and you know, NVIDIA and AMD have the easiest job on the planet to sell graphics cards. They go, look at picture one, look at picture two. Picture two is prettier. More, you know, more polys, better frame rates, buy this one, you need this one now, and all of a sudden, they're selling cards. With audio, audio is experiential. You have to experience it to appreciate it. So we've always had a challenge, and so we rely on people that buy in and love audio to go, hey, you guys have to get this, you have to hear it. So let's, let's put this in perspective. If yep. you could hold the card up, I mean, that's a pretty thick card. Yep. That doesn't look like a small piece no. of equipment. I no. mean, on a motherboard, a sound chip is like a chip, and yes. that's as good as it gets with maybe yes. some, some extra diodes here and there. But that looks like a commitment. Well, we're using the best transistors you can get. We're using all of the best circuitry you can have. So uh, when we're doing it, you know, we really have to optimize circuitry to get the DBS and R rating that we have. So uh, pristine audio is something that we can easily do better than motherboard audio because they cap out because they have so many transistors and so much of a noisy layout that they can only get so good. So we automatically have an advantage there on the DBS and R side because we can isolate things and, 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 and build the circuit board such that we're isolating noise and minimizing interference. So there's already an advantage there. But a lot of that is not going to be perceptible unless you are pushing it out the right way. And one of the innovations of this card is we came up with something called XAMP. And XAMP is actually the first bi-amplified uh, uh, sound port. So what we're doing is we take a headphone, on your headphones, we actually power the left and right ear cup separately from each other. So it's not one amp powering both, it's an amp dedicated to each ear cup. And you might think, okay, well, big deal, it's just more power. But when you have a really high-end ESS, cause so we have a Sabre class DAC in this, which is reserved typically for really high-end audiophile gear, you know, stuff that's in the five, six thousand dollar range. We put it on this card at a much cheaper price, you know, 150 bucks. And it would only sound as good as the amp is. So we developed this amp and now you put on your headphones and because we're so clean and because there's so much power there, the audio is noticeably different, even from the best of the best motherboards. And so the reviews have been saying that 
over and over again. So I'm going to ask you a difficult question yeah. in a difficult way, sure. okay? Um, a little awkward, maybe. <laughs> uh, is, you know, the motherboards, as you say, they've been getting a lot better. The yep. audio quality has been getting a lot better. Yep. A lot of time has passed, I think, is it like six years since the last yes. since yes. The sound card? Yes, the last card. So, uh, I mean, when people, and 150 is $150 yes. for the card, so it sounds about right to what it used yes. to cost. Yep, yep. Is it going to be like a dramatic improvement? Yes. Are people going to say like, you know what, that 150 was well spent, no buyer's remorse? So, so I'll tell you this right now, the return rate on this card is the lowest that we've had ever. Um, and I think it's because it is that noticeable. Um, it's, it's, and again, it's one of those things, I work for the company, right? So you have to, and it sounds, so you have to take my word for it. Uh, but at the end of the day, I've gone out on forums, I put myself out, you know, when we go out and we sell this card, I get involved in forums myself. Say, hey, I'm the product manager for this. I will tell you right now, this is worth putting your money behind and buying it. If you care about audio, and even if you don't, we will make you care about audio because the audio is that much better. One of the, one of the things that really bothers us is people will go out, they'll spend thousands of dollars on a, on a graphics card, thousands of dollars on a PC, and then they use the onboard audio. And that to us is the equivalent of going out and buying a 80 inch HD 4K HDR mega TV and using the speakers on the TV as your system. You're not completing the experience that way. And that's what we try to do. We try to complete the experience for everybody. So um, what, what I remember from my experience with the Sound Blaster cards is there usually had to be some patching or some extra work yep. done on the developers, you know, to make the card yep. work. Yep. What's the experience, like do you need supporting developers to make this perform or well, have you found no, a way around so that? It's, it's kind of the other way now. So we actually work in a after phase. So because we have access to all the audio streams, because we know how all the different audio engines work, we're able to uh, modify our algorithm to take advantage of those. So if we sense that somebody is using Certain game developers are using different types of reverbs and algorithms in there. We will cater, we can recognize instantly, okay, this is Unreal Engine, this is this reverb, and we're able to cater our surround algorithm not to compound that, but to ex accentuate it. So it becomes more lifelike, more warm, more realistic, and that's because we have a chip. Because nobody else, motherboards, card manufacturers, making audio products have an audio chip. Everything is a codec that's passive, and it's your CPU that's doing all the cycles. We actually have a quad core audio processor in these cards that's doing all the work for you. So if you're obsessive about your frame rates too, we'll help in that respect as well because your CPU is completely freed from any of that processing. So that was actually my next question, yep. if there's a performance benefit to this. Uh, there is, but, but you know, realistically, audio is not that hard to compute. But you're, if you're looking at people that are looking for that one or two frame rate difference, we will make that for you, for sure. Okay, good stuff. So what I'm hearing is you don't need the direct involvement of the game developers. You, you do all but the legwork. we work with them. So we do work with them. We do get their games in development. We do build our profiles around their games, and we're still active with them. But there's no, uh, there's no audio language anymore. They're all using standardized stuff because a lot of them also are trying to output to consoles as well. So they're using kind of a generic audio engine that we take advantage of and say, okay, we can make that sound awesome. It used to be that there were there was functionality in the Sound Blaster cards that the developers had to tie into if you wanted to benefit. Yes. Is there f special functionality in the sound cards can, that? Yeah, we can do interesting things. So for example, in, in the passive state, we have a couple features on this card also. Uh, one our, our uh, sonic radar. So we have something called sonic radar. Because we're getting all of these audio signals that are coming from the game engine, we can actually, if you're on, if you have a tablet or phone, you can actually connect your tablet or phone uh, to the same Wi-Fi network that this card is in. We have an app, and what we can do is give you a visual radar of where all of the audio cues are coming from in relation to your headspace. So now we give you kind of an acoustic radar uh, with blips, and we can actually ha you can actually tinker it to be, I only want to hear footsteps, or I only want to hear gunshots. And something like Counter-Strike or whatever, we kind of liken it to having uh, night vision, right? So it's one of those things where you get a, an advantage that way. We can do that because the combination of the chipset is, is parsing the audio, looking for all those cues, outputting in real time so there's no lag. We also have other things like uh, scout mode, which also lets you in real time, we can look at different frequency ranges. And when, we're, when you're playing a game, we can accentuate things in real time like uh, footsteps, like gun reloads, and that gives you an advantage as well. And you can't really do that without an audio processor, because latency is such a big a thing. If you run that out to the CPU, then run it back, 
you're going to get those milliseconds of delay. And that's just like if you're trying to play you know, on a MIDI keyboard and you have the input delayed, it's not going to feel right. And by the time the incident occurs, you're already dead from a gunshot or whatnot. So this is a dedicated card, a dedicated sound card. Yep. It used to be that Sound Blasters also worked with the motherboards to have their own solution built into the motherboard yep, we directly. Do. We still do. Are you still doing that? We still have partners that are building out motherboards with our audio chips on it, yeah. Based on this? Based on the same chipset. Uh, they're kind of an iteration behind. They're still kind of more in the Z series range, which still has a lot of our process, but they don't. They haven't integrated stuff like XAMP yet or the Scout Mode or Scout Radar, but that's coming. Yeah. Good stuff. Well, thanks so much for no joining problem. us. Thank you guys for having me. Thank you so much. This is Neil Schneider from Into Be Seen at CES 2018. We will, of course, be back with more. Thank you for watching.